In this video, I will explain how to use backward induction to solve a game tree. So let's consider the following game that we have right here. Here's the setup for this game. We have a buyer who wants to buy some product from a seller. Now, the buyer has a decision to make. They can either offer $500 for the product, or they could offer $100 for the product. Now, once the seller receives the offer, they can either decide to accept the offer or reject it. So for this particular game, I've listed the payoffs for both the buyer and the seller. So for example, in the scenario where the buyer offers $500 for the product and the seller accepts that offer, the buyer receives a payoff of 100. So the buyer, in other words, player one, the first person to make a move in this game, they get this first value as their payoff and the seller would get 450 as their payoff. So in this case, we say the seller is the second player in this game. They make the second move or the second decision. We can see the payoff in all four scenarios down here. Now, this type of game is referred to as a sequential moves game because we have players who make their moves sequentially. In other words, one player makes a move and then the other player, after observing the move of the first player, they decide on the move that they want to make. So this is different than a simultaneous moves game in which players make their moves simultaneously and independently. And this type of sequential moves game is also referred to as an extensive form game. So one way to solve this type of game is by using a technique known as backward induction. And here's how this technique works. It tells us to start at the end of the game tree and then work our way up. So in this case, we have two end nodes. In other words, after these nodes, so after the decision has been made at these nodes, there are no more decisions to make. And what backward induction says is, determine what the outcome will be at all of the end nodes, and then once you've done that, work your way up the game tree and keep determining what outcome will happen. So for this particular game, let's consider this first end node right here. The seller has a decision to make. If they reach this point in the game, they can either accept the offer made by the buyer, or they can reject it. Now we can see if the seller accepts the offer, they get a payoff of 450. But if they reject the offer, they get a payoff of zero. So which would they rather have? Well, obviously they would rather have the payoff of 450 because that's larger. So what we can say is that if we reach this point in the game, this outcome is never going to happen because the seller is never going to choose to take a payoff of zero as opposed to 450. So we can eliminate this as one of the possible outcomes. Then we can move over to this other end node over here and we'll say, okay, what if we reach this point in the game? Will the seller accept the offer or will they reject the offer? Well, if they accept the offer, they get a payoff of 50. And if they reject the offer, they get a payoff of zero. So they would prefer the payoff of 50. So we can also say that this outcome is never going to happen. If we reach this point in the game, this outcome is never going to occur. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll work our way up the game tree. So we'll move to the next node, which would be this node right here. At this node, the buyer has a decision. Should they offer $500 and ultimately receive the outcome of 100 as their payoff? Or should they make the offer of 100 and ultimately receive the payoff of 500? Well, 500 is greater than 100, so they would prefer this outcome. So we can also say that this outcome will also be eliminated because the buyer will never make the decision to land here as the outcome. So ultimately, the outcome of this game is going to be this right here, where the buyer will make an offer of $100 and the seller will accept, and the buyer will receive a payoff of 500 while the seller receives a payoff of 50. So that will ultimately be the solution to this game. And that's the whole idea behind backward induction. Start at the last nodes of the game tree and simply eliminate the outcomes that will not occur. And then just keep working your way up the game tree until you have determined what outcome will happen at each node.